Hi everyone, my name is Jason and I'm from the Global Enablement Team here at Palo Alto Networks. Today, I want to show you how to configure an IPsec-based site-to-site VPN between two of our firewalls. Now, I want to begin with this diagram here, which outlines the components that we need to configure in order to set up our site-to-site -site VPN. Now, configuring a VPN between two Palo Alto Networks firewalls is essentially three steps, and we start with our Layer 3 interface. That brings us to step number one. And step number one means we're gonna configure our phase one objects. Now this includes a crypto profile and the Ike gateway, as well as authentication settings. Now I'm referring to these objects as belonging to phase one because an IPsec VPN tunnel is established through two phases. I'll show you where these actual objects live in the firewall and how to configure them in a moment. That brings us to step number two. Next, you'll configure the phase two objects, which is the second part of an IPsec VPN. And this includes another crypto profile and the tunnel itself. Step number three, you'll need to configure a route that references the tunnel because Palo Alto Networks uses a route-based approach with the VPN. So now you have a summary of the components required to build a VPN on our firewalls. Let me show you where in the firewall to do this. In this scenario, I have two sites, site one, site two. Now I've already configured the site one firewall. I'm on the site two firewall and I wanna complete my configuration. As you can see here, I have a couple of interfaces, one one and ethernet one two. Ethernet one one is going to be my external facing interface. Now I know that the IP address here is one of those private IP addresses, but just pretend with me that's a public IP address. I'm going to attach to this layer three interface, my tunnel interface. So we're gonna come back to this tunnel tab here in a little bit, and I'm gonna configure a tunnel interface. Now, the other thing I've done is I've pre-configured a VPN zone so that I can also attach that to the interface and then use that in my security rules. Now, to complete my configuration, I need to create the phase one, phase two objects. So down here, let's begin with our phase one, and that includes the Ike Crypto down here and Ike Gateway. Under Ike Crypto, this is where I can define my encryption, authentication, and my key exchange protocols. And I can use the built-in ones, as you can see here, there are a few already created for me. Or I can use this add button down here and create my own custom Ike Crypto profile that I can then use in my Ike Gateway. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to use the defaults. Now let's go to the Ike Gateway. To create my Ike Gateway, I'm gonna choose Add. I'm gonna give it a name. Now I need to go through and define a handful of important settings for the internet key exchange or phase one portion of my IPsec VPN tunnel. Now the decisions I make here and the changes I make here need to be compatible with the other side. There are a lot of choices or decisions to be made, like for instance, which Ike version or internet key exchange version protocol is, uh, am I going to use? Uh, what interface am I going to use the Ike gateway on? So in this case, my external interface is Ethernet 1.1. Let me grab my IP address right there. And then who am I talking to on the other side? That's my peer IP type here. So I can either use dynamic and I can reference that endpoint by name, I'm just going to use static and type in that IP address manually right there. And then the authentication settings. So I have two choices, pre-shared key or certificate. If I choose certificate, there's several other decisions I have to make. I need to ensure that I have an installed trusted certificate. Uh, I can define validation settings here, how I want that certificate to be verified by the firewall. In my case, I'm gonna choose pre-share key as this matches the configuration on the other firewall. So I'm just gonna put in the appropriate password here. Now I can click on advanced options. And when I click on advanced options, this is where I connect the Ike gateway and the Ike crypto profile. So if I had a specific profile that I wanted to use, a custom profile or one of these three built-in profiles, I wanna select that here. Now, depending on what actual Ike protocol I'm using, well, if I had Ike V2 and Ike V1 listed, I could, well, let me show you. If I go to general, and choose Ike V2 preferred mode, that actually changes the advanced options tab where I can define a crypto profile for each respective protocol. Now, 
also have a couple of other options here. Like for instance, if I want this particular part of my VPN tunnel to be more responsive, I can um, turn on passive mode so it's not initiating the session. And then I can also turn on NAT traversal if there's a NAT device uh, between this VPN um, firewall um, and the other side. So I've got a couple of other settings here that might be of interest to you. I'm going to go ahead and click OK to this. So that's my phase one object configuration. The next thing I need to do is my phase two. Now to configure phase two, there's a couple of places I need to go. So I need to actually configure my tunnel under interfaces. I need to configure an IPsec crypto profile. This might be important. And then finally, I'm gonna configure the IPsec tunnel itself. Let's begin here again under the crypto profile. In this case, I've pre-configured a custom IPsec crypto profile. So I'm going to click on this and just show you how you can actually add additional protocols, whether they be encryption, authentication, or key exchange protocols. I'm going to choose add here. Let's grab advanced encryption standard 128 here, just like so, and click OK. Now that I've configured my IPsec crypto profile, the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure I configure my tunnels. So we're going to go to interfaces and I'm going to configure a tunnel on my layer three interface here. So I'm going to come in here. We're going to give it a number. So this is an identifier. In this case, I'm just going to call it two. And then I'm going to assign it a virtual router and the security zone that I pre-configured earlier. If I needed to create a security zone just for my VPN, I could do that. I could choose zone right here. I could use an existing zone that I have, but I want to be able to control traffic in my security rules for this particular tunnel. So having its own security zone is recommended. I'm going to click OK to that. All right, now that I have my tunnel interface and I've configured my IPsec crypto profile, let's go to IPsec tunnels. And this is really where I'm going to pull it all together. I'm going to click add, give it a name, identify the tunnel interface, select the Ike gateway, select the IPsec crypto profile. If I want to include some additional settings, like for instance, if I want to configure a tunnel monitor, I can do that under advanced options. And then if I'm connecting to a firewall or device that supports proxy IDs that needs to know local and destination networks for the VPN tunnel, I can configure proxy IDs. When connecting to Palo Alto network firewalls, these are not necessary because we're going to use a route entry instead. So this is all I need really for my basic VPN site to site configuration. I'm going to click OK to this. Now the final step is step three and that's to configure my virtual router so that traffic is directed over this VPN tunnel. I'm going to select virtual routers now. Select a virtual router, click on static routes, and I'm going to add a route for the site one internal network so that my site two people can connect over the VPN tunnel through this firewall and over that VPN connection. So I'm going to give it a name. Type in the destination address. This address is the remote network that I'm going to reach through the VPN tunnel. The interface, which is going to be my tunnel interface. And then I'm going to choose no next hop and click OK to this and OK. The final thing here is to make sure that the security rules are set up and in place. And I've already defined those for the sake of time. Now I'm going to choose commit save my changes. While that finishes committing, let's go back to the IPsec tunnel page. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to initiate a ping in the background and refresh this screen. And once the VPN tunnel has been established, we should see these turn from red to green. And there you have it. We just configured a site-to-site -site VPN between two Palo Alto Networks firewalls. We configured the phase one objects, the phase two objects, and configured the route we needed to establish the VPN tunnel. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. See you next time.